Hey y'all and welcome to Moner's Market and welcome to my trash to treasure video. I found some cabinet doors last year before I took my little hiatus and I'm going to show you what I did with a couple of them. Let's jump right on into DIY number one. For DIY number one, I'm going to make this cute little coat rack and this was the easiest thing ever. So I got three sizes of these doors when I found them. This little skinny one and then I got a little, it was a perfectly square. I got a couple of them. And then this long one right here, I got, I think like two or four of them. I don't remember. There's two there. But I want to say I had four of them when I found them. I don't quite remember. So I brought them inside and I washed them really, really good because they had been outside for quite a while in the shed and they were dusty and nasty. They were dusty and nasty when I got them off the side of the road. And after I got them all good and washed... I had to take the little, um, the brackets that you hang them with off, but right there at the top of that one thing, I want to say that was the one above their stove, because right there where I'm scrubbing at so hard was gr a lot of grease buildup. I mean, a lot of grease buildup. And you know, right above your stove where your it's my spice cabinet, so I keep my spices up there. Um, that and my cabinets in my kitchen have always, you know, like been the, the nastiest whenever it comes to keeping my cabinets clean. So that's where I think that one must have been. But anyway, it's going to help me in just a few minutes. I'll tell you how it's going to help me. So I just took a screwdriver and I removed those latches right there that you um, hang them on your wall with. And once I took those off... I, you know, cleaned up the spot where those were on there at, and then I'm going to get it ready to paint. But now these things, you know, when you have cabinets, you don't keep them for a year or two. You keep them for years and years and years, so they were a booger to get off. So I'm just going to take my white Waverly chalk paint, and I'm going to go in and give this two coats. Now, I'm going to call it a heavily distressed coat because... I'm not worried about the cracks and the crevices and getting every little nook and cranny filled with paint to where it's a perfectly white, smooth cabinet door because you know me, I like a rustic farmhouse, shabby chic feel. And if you paint it perfectly and you don't have any wood showing through, then it doesn't give you that sort of rustic look or that rustic vibe that you're looking for. So I'm giving it a good coat, two good coats. But again, I'm not real worried about covering every single inch of the cabinets. And that way, when I go to distress them down in just a few minutes, it's not going to be as hard and I won't have as much work to do. So once I put my first coat on, it's not going to look like it but I do let it dry in between and with the help of my heat gun I help it dry because when I get started on something I don't like to just sit wait and wait and wait and wait for paint to dry so I'll get my little heat gun out and I'll help it along depending on how much time I have anyway I'm on my second coat here and if you can see down in the little crooks and crevices in the corners right there, you see there's not even any paint right there. Because I just, like I said, am trying to get that real shabby chic sort of look with this. However, once I get that done, then I'm ready to put my little sign on. This is the cutest sign that I have ever seen. It says, welcome-ish. Depends on who you are and how long you stay. <laughs> Ain't that the truth? Sometimes, y'all, when we get company, we are so excited for them to come over, depending on who it is. Some people you want to come over and stay forever and ever, and then other people, it's like, okay, you've been here for 10 minutes. Did you need something? <laughs> it's time to go home. <laughs> but I'm going to take my pesto, my beautiful rustic green pesto from Chalk Couture, this, you know, what I can, as always, what I can list in my description box will always be listed on the materials that I use. And paste it on and look at here. You just simply pull it off. Easiest thing ever. Is that not the cutest? Now, again, it looks like I went straight into putting my coat hooks on. I didn't. I let it dry. 
but with the magic of video and time lapse, it's already dried. And I did not show, and I don't know why I didn't show this, but I realized when I started doing my voiceover, I didn't show it on either one. And I didn't, I don't know why I didn't record it, but I took some polyurethane from Weather Wash and I polyurethaned over this whole entire piece. And what that's going to do is protect my paint and it's going to protect my little sign, my welcome-ish words. So I found these hooks on Amazon and I will, if they're still available, have them listed down in my description box. I haven't looked yet to see if they're still available, but I would think they would on Amazon. And I'm just going to put three of them on there. And I love that black up against that white and green. I think the colors are so pretty together. It's actually the colors that I have in my house. And now I'm going to take a knife, just a kitchen knife, a paring knife, an old knife that isn't real sharp anymore that I don't use it for cutting anything. I use it in my craft room. I don't even put it back in my kitchen anymore. And I'm going to scrape around the edges. And that is just so much quicker and so much easier than taking a sander and sanding for 30 minutes because that, that sharp edge on the knife just peels that paint on the edges of this wood. And it may, being raw wood, I mean, being wood, it makes it a lot easier because it's hard and it's solid and you can put as much pressure on it as you want to and it's not going to mess anything up. And I did go back with a smaller paintbrush and I did polyurethane over where I scraped it off. But now when you scrape that off, be sure you take a wet rag. You see my wet rag right there. Be sure you take a wet rag and you wipe everything down to get all of that dust and that paint that you've just scraped up. Get all of that. Wipe it all down and and make it real smooth before you go back and you put your polyurethane back on there. I should have done that before I put my hooks on, but it was an afterthought. So it was, you know, I had to fight around my hooks to get it all done. But yeah, that's me just kind of wiping it all back down. Again, don't know why I didn't show the polyurethane step, but I did polyurethane everything. Now I'm just taking some yarn, or I mean, I'm sorry, some twine, and I'm going to put me a couple of screws and I used the screws that came out of the latches that go on the or hinges I keep calling them latches the hinges that came off of this I just took a couple of the little screws and eyeballed it and then I took some of that twine and I just tied it off real tight together those hands right there are my Shyla and look at here y'all how cute did this turn out I love it Look at that paint job. It's an ugly, unfinished, shabby chic, rustic, farmhousey sort of look. And I absolutely love the way it turned out as far as the distressing goes. And I love the way that knife just sort of bumped off all those edges and makes it look like it's about, I don't know, what, 20 years old or better, you know? Something you would have pulled out of Granny's house. But now let me show you this little Jaden's printer. Jaden's sent me this printer, and I have never in my life seen anything like this. It is wireless. It is ink-free. Never in my life did I think there would be a printer that is ink-free, but it's a thermal printer, and it does it from heat somehow. I don't know how it works, but it's amazing. Anyway, it comes with a roll of paper right there. You see the paper. Easiest thing in the world to put together. I just took that little piece off, laid it down, and shut it. That was it, y'all. There was nothing else to assembling that. I charged it, and then you take your phone, and you scan the QR code. It gives you the little link, and you put it on your phone. You put a little app on your phone. So easy. This is just a banana bread recipe that I had that I wanted to print out. And I just went to my banana bread recipe. I hit print and it found the little printer right away in my air print. And it started printing and I'm like, but wait, where's the ink? How in the heck did that happen? No, there is no ink. It's all thermal. 
I still don't get it, but I love it. And it printed so smooth and so easy. Now, the only thing I wasn't too keen on was that it was not color, but I loved absolutely everything else about this printer. And there will be a 10% code. I just showed it to you, but I will link it down in my description box too. So go get you one. They are amazing. Now let's get into DIY number two. For DIY number two, I'm going to make this tray. Now listen, this is one of my favorite things I've ever made. I am telling you it's in the top three of the one of my favorite things I've ever made. This is a 20 by 20 square cabinet door. It's a big one and it is solid wood. So you are going to have this for a long time. And I'm doing the same thing that I did with the other one. I cleaned it up. I cleaned it up in the beginning and washed it down, let it dry. I'm using the same white Waverly chalk paint, and I'm doing the same sort of haphazard, uh, distressed coats of paint. Two again, two coats of paint again. It's looking here, when I'm doing the voiceover, like I'm covering a whole lot more of this than I am. But now I told you that when I was cleaning it, I couldn't get all of that grease off. And I, I was literally like about to pull my hair out. But it was clean enough that I was like, you know what? It is what it is. I'm just going to slap some paint on it. I'm tired of fighting with it. But watch what happens. Something about that little bit of residue that was left over. Now, it wasn't coated and caked on grease. I did get most of it off. But I'm going to show you what happened to it. Oh, no, I'm going to put the, the little cow on it first. We'll get back to that thought in a minute. This is just a little Highland cow. You can still get that. I will have it linked below from my um, Chalk Couture website. I love this. It actually comes with two bows. It comes with a little bow that you can put on top of its head. And one of them is a cow, I mean, a um, leopard print. It's so cute. But I just decided to leave it off. I didn't want to make this cow a girl. I wanted to just leave it like it was. Anyway, that's just me using a little um, screwdriver to kind of measure around and see if I had it kind of in the middle. You know, I'm the laziest daggum crafter you ever saw. Instead of going and finding me a measuring tape, I just used my little screwdriver right there to measure with. <laughs> now, this is my bark chalk paste that I'm using. It's our brown. And watch how cute this turns out whenever I pull it up. Do you see how easy that is? You just lay your stencil down. You rub that stuff all over it. And you pull the stencil back up. And look at that, y'all. I am obsessed with this Highland cow. I love it. Now, again, I did let that dry in between. I did polyurethane it. Don't know why I didn't show you that. But look here. This is where I'm talking about right there. Look at the crackles in that paint. That's from that little bit of residue of grease left over. So it came, it worked to my advantage and gave me a super duper rustic sort of paint job. And I am so tickled about the way it turned out. Now these little finials here, I got from Lowe's. And I think it's a couple dollars a pack. But you know, everything's gone up so much in the past two years. I don't know what they cost right now. But I will, if I can find them, have them linked in my description box below. Now, I'm taking my antique wax. And I'm going to rub it all over or paint it all over these little legs here. And I love these feet are these finials. You know, I'm going to put feet on something if I'm making a video. <laughs> I just do. I love risers. I love trays. And this one was huge. It, it made a beautiful serving tray that I'm going to show you in just a few seconds when I'm done here with these feet. But I also am obsessed with antique wax because let me show you what happens when you paint this stuff on and then I, I like to use baby wipes. Some people will just use the same rag. They'll wet it, take the, off their antique wax, and then wash, you know throw it in the washer and wash it. I just like to use a baby wipe, but you can use whatever you want to. But be sure to wipe that paint off because look at the difference here. The one on the left 
is painted but not wiped off. The one on the right, I did wipe off. And look at how pretty it brings the wood out in those finials. Isn't that gorgeous? I just love it. And these are the cutest little finials. I love how chunky and fat they are. And it just went perfect with this little square cabinet door that I found. Again, on the side of the road. So it was free. The only thing I have in these are the, you know, in this is the feet. And in my other one is the hook. And I already had my, my chalk couture stencils. So these were basically free. They cost me a couple dollars a piece. Now here I'm measuring to make sure that this cabinet door is thick enough for that screw on the end of that. And those screws come with it. Now I'm just drilling a little pilot hole again with one of the screws that came off of the hinges here. I put, you know, screwed it in, pulled it back out, and it made my feet so much easier to go on. Then you just stick it down in there and twist it on until you get it all down in there and you, it's the easiest thing in the world. Now you can, if you want to, you can add you some of that wood glue on the top of your finial before you screw it down and give it a little bit more um, strength. You know what I'm saying? That's up to you. I did not do that on this, but I kind of wish I had. I, but that's it. That was all there was to making this tray. Now, if you wanted to, I did have me some handles pulled out that I was going to put on either side of this, and I just changed my mind. I don't know why. I was just like, no, it's too pretty the way it is. Look at them feet, y'all. Look at the wood grain that that antique wax pulled out, and look at the finish on this cabinet door from that little bit of grease residue that was left over. Look at my cow. I called him George when I was painting. I was like, well, hey, you look like a George. Look at that. Is that not the cutest thing? Look at the little bell hanging. And like I said, it comes with two different bows that you can put on top of it. But look at the paint job, y'all. I wish I could have picked it up better the way it sort of crackled and broke up with that little bit of a residue of the grease that was left over. It sounds gross, but it was clean, I promise. Just had a little small residue that would not allow that paint to dry. I mean, I'm sorry to um, go smooth on there, but this is the final reveal of both of my pieces, and I am tickled to death at the way they turned out. Look how rustic, how shabby chic, how beat up and old and farmhousey these look. I love it. I don't know who created this sort of vibe a few years ago, but I am obsessed with it. A lot of people say it's going out and the new modern, clean, sleek style is coming in. You do you. Farmhouse is me. And as old as I am at this point, I I can't see myself changing to any kind of sleek, smooth anything because I just love the way a rustic, shabby, chic piece looks and feels. And it matches everything about my home. And I just, I love it. Now, I did make that um, that beaded garland there. I should have put that in the video, shouldn't I? But I made that a while back. But there you go. Now you can see the paint. Look at yonder, y'all, over to the left, how it just, it would not adhere. And I was so aggravated when I was painting it. But then whenever it dried and had that sort of cracked up old look, oh, I was so happy. I was just tickled to death at the way it turned out. I can't wait to read down in the comments what you think about this. Now, I know some people are going to tell me you could have used this degreaser. You could have used that degreaser. Yes, I could have. Yes, I could have gotten that all off. But I'm glad I didn't because I love the way the paint job turned out in the end. If this is the first time you've ever been to Moner's Market, I just want to say welcome to Moner's Market. My name is Brenda. But my sweet grandbabies call me Moner, and I cherish that name. I do a video every Tuesday at 8 p.m., or I try to. Sometimes I can't always have one, but for the most part, about 95% of the time, I have a video. And it's Eastern Standard Time. I always do a premiere during the live, I mean, during the, yeah, during the live when it first comes out and we have a chat and you can come in that chat and talk to us 
and we just have the best little group of people in there, men and women alike, and we just have a great time. And I invite you to come to the live chat and chit-chat with us and say hello and watch the video with us when it premieres. Let me know down in the comments which one was your favorite piece. Mine's definitely the tray. It's definitely in my top three of all the pieces I've ever made. I love it. I will have the link to my Chalk Couture website and the link to e either one of these pieces that I can find down in my description box. If it's not there, then we aren't still carrying it. But I will try to go to like Amazon or somewhere and see if somebody's selling one for you and post that link down there also. Anyway, I've rambled on longer than I wanted to. I appreciate you coming and watching with me. I hope to see you next Tuesday at 8 p.m. But for now, thanks for coming. Thanks for watching. Be blessed. Bye now.